Starwood Homes has been building homes for more than 100 years. The business has been passed through three generations of the Campbell family, with the fourth generation moving quickly up the ranks. After 100 years of planning for, designing and building homes and neighbourhoods around the Golden Horseshoe, the Campbell family has learned a thing or two about home building. Today we're joined by Ward Campbell to share perspective, insight and knowledge about home building and home buying. You're watching Daily Web TV. If you want to look at the history of the building industry, the past, the present and the future, then don't go away because we're here with Ward. Now, Ward Campbell from Starwood Homes, you have a very long history in the home building industry. We absolutely do. As a matter of fact, my family has been building in the Hamilton area for more than 100 years now. Uh, my grandfather arrived here in 1906, and the first thing he did in 1907 was start building a house for himself and his bride-to-be. And uh, we've been building houses in the city of Hamilton in this in southern Ontario ever since, over 100 years. That, that's an incredible history. Now, what would you say the, the sort of highlights of, of that past history have been? Well, there's been lots of highlights along the way. Uh, certainly a lot of it's innovation and it's, you know, every decade had its, its own highlight. It's, you know, we've, our, my family's been through eight or ten recessions, a depression and two world wars in the, in the housing is, industry in, in Hamilton. So we've seen it all. Um, certainly some of the highlights would be, uh, you know, the different eras and, the, and what happened in the, in the 20s. My grandfather, he concentrated on, on very articulate stuff. He would all stone surround on windows and he was a, a stone person and a, and a plasterer by trade. And, you know, half the buildings in the city at that time, you know, the picket building, all those, they did the stone work and the plastering work as well as building houses and apartments on their own. Uh, of course, 30s were totally different. It was a, a depression era and it was people paid their rent in chickens. Um, <laughs> the 40s bought the end of the wars and, and at, at that time of course the biggest thing at that time was getting enough materials and stuff to house the vets when they returned. Mm -hmm. Getting enough lots on, getting enough nails. And my dad will tell stories about how he used to pick the nails up on the, on the floor at night and then resort them so that they were there for the carpenters in the morning, that sort of thing. So wow. it was a real uh, innovation in housing and that drove a demand for innovation in housing. And mm -hmm. you know, one of the first things that, that we changed is we no longer put block foundations in. We, we switched to, to pour concrete foundations, which at the time was unheard of. What do you mean you can pour a concrete foundation? But it was an innovation that was needed to be done. And of course, today we still pour everything. It, uh, always have. Right. Um, drywall, another innovation. Like my dad, I can remember him sitting with my mom at the table saying, and this is probably in a, I was probably four or five at the time, and he goes, you know, we have to be able to speed this up. The plaster's taking too long. We've got to get some more houses built. We're going to try this drywall thing and, and go with it. And sure enough, and of course, we've been drywalling, and that's mm -hmm. the, the, the norm now in, in, in all construction. Right. Truss roofs, again, was another. My dad was a very innovative guy. He liked production. He was a, a very systematic type mm -hmm. of person. And, you know, he loved it. When the truss roofs came on, he, he, he bought right in and was the first guy in the city to put the trusses up, the drywall, the, just all that sort of stuff. It was just... Um, Housing styles have changed. I mean, that you know, during the 60s, things started getting a little bit bigger. In the 70s, they, they got a little bit bigger again. And then, of course, in the 80s, was the everything was 3,000 square mm -hmm. foot. By the end of the 80s, we were 3,000 square foot double car garages was the norm for, for houses we built. Things have changed again. We're back down into smaller houses. I think people are looking for, you know, a little more luxurious, a little smaller, a uh, few attributes like higher ceilings and bigger windows. They want the, the feeling of the space without having the maintenance and, and the care of the space. So we're, we're, I think the housing design's gone a little bit more back that way. And the other thing that we're into, of course, is lifestyle stuff, mm -hmm. which is different. So, so you, you're really, because you've, you've really seen all of the different uh, developments and you've obviously been leading edge it, it puts you in the in the forefront what would you say that the future of of housing and building houses would be well i think it's going to be a continuation of energy efficiency and green building mm -hmm. um uh, you know, like I said, our company was the very first in this area to build an R2000 house. In 1983, we did a pilot project for the federal government building R2000. Uh, we've done R2000 communities and townhouse communities. Pre we were the first to do them in Ontario. Mm -hmm. the green building is coming, you know, a little bit more energy efficient, a little bit more environmentally friendly, both in, in subdivision design right. and in, in home building. There will certainly be things. And again, like I said, the, the, big, the big thing I think people are looking for a little more 
is a little smaller house, but a little nicer house, maybe, right. you know, the volume, but not the, the maintenance and the, and the thing. So maintenance free Give lifestyle us, type of thing. Right. We're very busy people right now. It's, we, we are. So, yeah. so we want it all and you provide that. Now, if you, if you had uh, one word of advice for somebody buying a new home, what would that be? Probably the, the same old adage that you've heard a hundred times, location, location, location. Uh, and remember, you're buying a home for your family to live in. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's a great investment. The best investment a family's ever going to make. You, you buy it and it goes up in value and mm -hmm. the profit is tax-free. I mean, it's just right. it's the best investment you can possibly make. But don't think of it as an investment only. It is a place to live. Buy something that suits your lifestyle, that suits your needs, and don't be so concerned about the investment part of it. That will just happen naturally. You mm -hmm. live in that house for 20 years, you're gonna, it's going to be a great investment. So the investment happens naturally. Buy what, what suits you the best. And certainly words of wisdom from somebody who has a family that's seen that price go up over those hundred years. I know you were showing me earlier oh, yeah, from the, the 40s. I, I was cleaning out my office the other day and found a, a brochure from, from the late 40s, early 50s. And, you know, the houses were, were anywhere from 9500 to $11,000. And, you know, those houses are now $250,000. So that, the, that will happen automatically. Mm -hmm. Buy the house that suits your family, right. that suits your lifestyle needs. And having gone through those multiple recessions, it's still ending up. It's still... The top. We did a little analysis a little while ago, and probably on average, you know, land values and stuff, somewhere around 10% compounded if you just take it in. It's like, but you can't take short terms. Don't take this year to next year. Take this year to 20 years or 30 years, and you'll see it. So looking ahead with a, with a man who has history. Thank you so much. That's great information. Now, if you want more information, you can go to the Starwood website, which is starwoodhomes.com. I'm Marielle Bradley. We've been talking to Ward Campbell, and you've been watching Daily Web TV.